Thank you very much for such a warm welcome. It's my pleasure and privilege to be here on this beautiful platform to share a few ideas with you. So, I come from a family with a deep-rooted tradition in Ayurveda. When I was a kid, I had my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my uncle and my father as practitioners at home. So, we had four practitioners from three generations at a time. And you can guess, whatever we did as kids, starting from the powder we used to brush with in the morning till the last drop of warm milk we had just before bed, everything were closely related to Ayurveda. So there are a lot of traditions, practices that we follow just because they are time-tested, they are given tremendous results over a period of time. At the same time, there are certain traditions and practices which have gone under the lens of contemporary scientific understanding. Thorough researches have been done and they are followed and is showing a great light for the medicine, future of medicine ahead. So I'm going to share with you an idea which is deep rooted in this tradition, which belongs to this second category. That is, it has been put under the lens of scientific modern understanding and thorough researches are being going on. So I'll share with you a couple of incidents to uh, make this idea more clear. So when I was a kid at home, whenever we had any kind of health issues, you know, starting from, you know, common cold, fever, um, stomach ache, diarrhea, whatever it is, there used to be a medicine which is common in almost all the prescriptions we got. And that medicine, it's a powder by the name Ashtachurna. I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but this powder is generally used in the treatment of diseases of like indigestion and such conditions. But this powder was common in almost all the prescriptions we had, whatever the condition may be. So as a kid, I was quite curious to know why, why we have to take this spicy, bitter powder every time we go ill. It doesn't matter what your illness is. But we never had the guts, in fact, to ask our elders to know why, why we have to take this. During those days, we had a person who stays close to our house, who is mentally, you know, I can say unfit in the sense he doesn't recognize much people. He doesn't, you know, um, dress properly. He doesn't appear properly. He is not mentally fit. And this guy, he used to come to our home once in a while to have a lunch. Right. So on a fine day, this guy came to our home. He had a heavy lunch and he was about to leave. Then my grandfather arrived. So he, in his typical demeanor, he asked, I'm not feeling well. Can you give me some medicine? Grandfather came inside the house. He took the same Ashtajurna and gave it to him. Now, the curiosity I had slowly turned into a bit of anxiety, right? Because I'm very sure about what his health condition is. And he is given a medicine, Ashtajurna, which is commonly given to me, not once or twice, but multiple times. And the question now comes, am I? So, with that anxiety, I went and asked my grandfather, why are you giving this medicine to him? Because he used to give this medicine to us, right? Why are you giving this medicine to him? And he very candidly told, he had a heavy lunch, right? Let it digest. Then he added to that, take care of the gut first. It will take care of everything else. Right? So he told, take care of the gut first. It will take care of everything else. Friends, do you think the gut has the potential to do things more than just digesting and excreting the food we eat? Yes, it can. Have you heard of something called second brain? We do have a brain, right? Friends, we do have a second brain. And don't be fooled, it's not situated here, but it's right in your gut. There is something called gut microbiota. It's a group of microorganisms, and I say microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, all those stuffs, who are actually your friends, not your enemies. So if you consider your gut as a factory, these microbes are considered as your workers. 
they work day and night not just to keep your body fit but also to keep your mind fit right i'll come to it with another incident so this happened in my clinical practice a year back i was sitting in my opd and a middle aged man came he is around 35 years old he came he sat in front of me and he told very he was not looking very well he told me doctor i don't feel like living anymore okay doctor i don't feel like living anymore so as a physician as a doctor the first thing that struck me was depression right the common cold of psychiatry we say depression the way he expressed it it's a typical sign of somebody who is depressed but i wanted to know more about him and i asked about his whereabouts his personal life his professional life and i came to know that he is a well accomplished professional in the mollywood industry who works behind the scene he has a lot of international recognitions to his name there is no want of money fame or self worth and as far as what he revealed his personal life also looks well settled so i was a bit confused why is he depressed is there anything beyond what we see i asked him more about his medical history so he revealed that around a year back he started experiencing some symptoms like this where he is not able to go social he is not able to interact with people and he always feels lonely and all those symptoms with that he went to his physician family physician he gave him some medications he was not comfortable with that he was referred to a psychotherapist he went to a psychotherapist he did some sessions again he was not very comfortable and he came to try ayurveda that's what he told he i came to try ayurveda so as an ayurvedic physician to be frank i was totally confused because there was nothing very clear that suggest he is depressed or he can have this set of symptoms so as doctors we try something we try to buy some time so i asked him to do some blood works then asked him to start with some very basic medications and come back after maybe 3 weeks or 1 month to know more about his condition friends he never came back but after 6 to 8 months i got a call he introduced himself and told me doctor my quality of life has improved that's the word he used my quality of life has improved so i was surprised because i didn't write any medicine that can have such an effect and i asked him what happened what did you do he told after the consultation with me he was not comfortable because i didn't go for any aggressive treatments or medications he went back to his physician but he did the blood works suggested physician went through the blood works and he found that a vitamin called vitamin b12 was pretty low in his blood that means and the physician diagnosed him as a case of depression due to vitamin b12 deficiency he was advised supplements he was given injections for the same and he says after 2 to 3 months he started experiencing the change he became more active he became more active in his professional life as well as personal life and he says at the end my quality of life has improved so friends the gut does not regulate your body only it can regulate your mind too and you know why it is called as second brain it's not just because its size or its shape is somewhat similar to the brain it functions similar to your brain it has a lot of functions which is similar to your brain right so let me ask you do all of you remember what you had for your breakfast today morning yes right believe me you are or your body is what you eat and can i ask you what were the most prominent thoughts you had today morning right you all remember so believe me your emotional status depends more on what the thoughts you have repeatedly so i told this just to make sure that what you consume to your body what you consume your to mind are very important and we have with us a tool called gut microbiome that can regulate 
both this. Right. So, there is something called Nutritive Psychiatry. It's an upcoming branch, especially with the Harvard University, where they are doing a lot of researches on the same. And what they do is, they use nutrition, proper nutrition as a tool to treat psychiatric disorders. So, what connects both? Nothing but your gut. Right. Well, I'll share with you a couple of experiments, research studies which were done in the same direction. They are very interesting in fact. So, these are animal studies, animal models. So, in one of these studies, the researcher divided a group of mice, rats, you know, studies happen more in mice, into two groups. One group was very calm, they were not exposed to any stress or stimulus. The other group of mice, they were exposed to a lot of stress and stress as such stimulus. After a brief period of time, what they did is, they removed the gut microbiota of the calm mice and implanted it into the stressed mice. You know what happened? Those mice became much calmer. Right. Similarly, in another experiment, a certain part of the gut microbiota of a rat from mice was removed and this mice was exposed to a cat. You know what happens generally when a rat is exposed to a cat. But in this case, the rat was not at all afraid. The rat was not showing any signs of fear. It was dancing around the cat. Why? Why this happens? How does this gut connect with your mind? There are a lot of pathways, but one prominent one I would like to share with you is about a hormone or a neurotransmitter called serotonin. I think few of you may be aware of it. It is now being branded as one of the famous happy hormones through the social media and all. So this serotonin, you know where it is produced? It regulates your mood, it gives you that emotional balance and everything. You know where it is produced? It's not in your brain. 90% of your serotonin is produced by the same friends, the gut microbiota. So gut, if healthy, can regulate not just your body, but also your mind. And Ayurveda gives you a beautiful explanation of how this works, body and mind. It says that your mind and body are like an object and its container. Right. Your mind is the object and your body is the container or the vessel which contains it. It gives an example saying that you take a little bit of ki, cow ki, in one side and the other side you take a vessel. So it's like the object and the container. If you pour warm ki into this vessel, what happens to the vessel? Vessel becomes warm, right? Similarly, if the vessel to which you are pouring this ki is warm, what happens to the ki? It becomes warm. Friends, this is how your body and mind works. If your body, if your mind is warm, as it goes inside and sits inside the body, the warmth spreads through the body. Similarly, if the body which contains this mind is warm, the mind also becomes warm. Warmth is nothing but any kind of discomfort, illness or anything. So friends, it's very important to keep yourself cool. Both your body and mind cool. So wellness or health is not just the diet you follow. It's not just the physical activities you are into but also the thoughts that you regularly consume. Right. So I conclude with sharing a quote which says, You may not be able to change your genes for a better health, but certainly you can change your gut microbiota for a better health. Thank you. Thank you very much.